While President Trump was in El Paso, former Texas Congressman Beto O'Rourke was not far away holding a rally of his own with fellow Democrats. Here's a portion of that event with Mr. O'Rourke telling the story of Thelma White, who graduated from Douglas High School in El Paso in 1954. was denied entry solely because of the color of her skin. She did not allow that injustice to deter her or to dampen her spirits, enlisting the services of a little-known attorney named Thurgood Marshall. They took that case all the way to the federal courtroom of R.E. Thomason, another great El Pasoan, and together making their stand for this community. They integrated higher education for every single American in the state of Texas. Whether it was those great El Pasoans and great Americans, or Nolan Richardson and Burt Williams who working together wrote the ordinance that desegregated places of public accommodation in El Paso, one of the first, if not the first cities in the former Confederacy to do so, all of them made a stand together for El Paso, for this country, not just for themselves, not just for people who looked like them, not just with the generation with whom they lived. They did it for everyone, including those of us who stand here today, the beneficiaries of their courage and of the stand that they made. That is our opportunity at this moment. With the eyes of the country upon us, all of us together are going to make our stand. Here, in one of the safest cities in the United States of America. Safe, not because of walls, but in spite of walls. Secure, because we treat one another with dignity and respect. That is the way that we make our communities and our country safe. Aquí podemos mostrar que si queremos asegurar nuestras comunidades, necesitamos tratar cada persona con dignidad, con respeto, como merecen, como humanos. Here, in the largest binational community in the Western Hemisphere. Two and a half million people from two countries speaking two languages with two cultures and two histories who come together, are joined, not separated by the Rio Grande River, forming something far greater and more powerful than the sum of people or the sum of our parts. We have so much to give so much to show the rest of the country, and we're doing it right now. Here. Here. A city that has been one of the safest in the United States of America for 20 years and counting safe long before a wall was built here. In fact, a little less safe after that wall was built. We can show the rest of the country as we make our stand here together tonight that walls do not make us safer. Walls will require us to take someone's property, their house, their farm, their ranch, to build a wall at a time of record low northbound apprehensions, at a time that El Paso is not the outlier in the cities of the border. In fact, if you look at McAllen, if you look at San Diego, if you look at all points in between, the U.S. cities of the U.S.-Mexico border are far safer than the U.S. cities deeper in the interior of the United States of America. We know that walls do not save lives. 
walls end lives. In the last 10 years, more than 4,000 children, women, and men have died trying to come to this country, to work jobs that no one will take, to be with a family member, to flee horrific brutality and violence and death in their home countries. And as we build these walls, 600 miles of the 2,000 mile border walled up and counting, we push them to ever more treacherous and remote stretches of the U.S.-Mexico border, thereby ensuring greater suffering and death. We stand for America, and we stand against walls. We know that there is no bargain in which we can sacrifice some of our humanity to gain a little more security. We know that we deserve and will lose both of them if we do. We stand for the best traditions and values of this country, for our fellow humanity and who we are when we are at our best, and that's El Paso, Texas. I'm glad the country's here to see us. We stand, we stand for the Constitution of the United States of America and against emergency national security declarations that would allow the president to subvert an equal branch of government, build a wall when we do not need it, 1.6 million apprehensions the first year of the George W. Bush administration, a little more than 300,000 apprehensions last year. And you know who we are apprehending? Kids, children, if they are lucky, they're there with their moms or dads, walking 2,000 miles, if they're lucky, atop, not inside of a train known as the Beast or La Bestia, surviving every manner of depredation and those who prey on human misery and here at their most vulnerable and desperate moment. They want to make sure that they have found the right place. That 243 years into this great experiment and idea that is America, we will not take advantage of them. We will not send them back to certain death. We will not believe that walls can or should keep them out. Instead, we welcome them with open arms. This the wealthiest, the most powerful country on the face of the planet can meet this moment in our obligations to one another and be all the stronger for it. We, we, together, we are making a stand for the truth against lies and hate and ignorance and intolerance. We are gonna show the country who we are. A president who describes Mexican immigrants as rapists and criminals, we have the chance to tell him and the country, immigrants commit crimes, including violent crimes, at a lower rate than do Americans who were born in this country. El Paso has been the safest city in the United States of America, not in spite of the fact that we're a city of immigrants, but because we are a city of immigrants. We're gonna make a stand to ensure that we live up to our promise, to our potential, and to our purpose as a country. So it's not just those things that we are against and which we must stop, like this wall. It is also the things that we want to replace that with, those things which we are for. Number one, let's make sure that as they leave the deadliest places on the planet, that we make way and make room for those asylum seekers who are coming to this country. Meet our obligations under U.S. and international law and do the right thing. 
two, let's ensure that no dreamer ever again fears deportation from this, their home country. Make every single one of them U.S. citizens so that they can contribute to their full potential. And their parents, the original dreamers, let's make sure that they stay here as well on a path to citizenship, contributing all they've got to this city's, this state's, and this country's greatness, and the millions who labor in the shadows, the most back-breaking work that man can invent. Let's pull them out into the sunshine. Let's allow them to live with dignity for themselves and their families. Let's ensure that their genius remains here in the United States, making us a stronger, a safer, and a more successful country by their very presence. And to the legitimate concerns about security and safety, knowing full well that the vast majority of everyone and everything that ever comes to the United States crosses through one of our ports of entry to end the scourge of illegal drug trafficking and the trafficking in human beings, let's invest in the infrastructure, the technology, and the personnel at the ports of entry to improve our quality of life and make this a safer country. And then let's do this. The words that we use have extraordinary power. When we describe asylum seekers as though they were animals, when we refer to immigrants as an invasion, when we conflate dreamers with members of MS-13, not only are we spreading lies and committing an injustice, but the policies and the practices that follow should not surprise us. When we take little children, babies, from their mothers and fathers here at the U.S.-Mexico border at their most desperate moment, when we put that child in a cage, turn that parent over to the Department of Justice, then to ICE for deportation, commit cruelty, tantamount to torture upon that young child, it follows the rhetoric that we use. Let's make sure that we refer to our human beings, our fellow human beings, with kindness, with respect, with dignity. Let's not be afraid of our own shadow or of who we are. Let's own this moment and the future and show the country there is nothing to be afraid of when it comes to the U.S.-Mexico border. In other words, let's make sure, let's make sure that our laws, our language, and our leaders reflect our values, who we are, our experience, what we know, to do great things for this country. Because I tell you what, I know that we can do it, and I know that we must do it. The eyes of history, the judgment of the people of the future, our kids and grandkids, and the generations that will succeed them, are looking back at this moment to see what we do as we define ourselves and this country. I know that we have the power because I've seen it before. On Father's Day of this last year, when we learned that this president was taking kids, taking babies from their moms and dads, all of us came down to Tornillo to bear witness, to testify to our fellow Americans about what was being done in their name. And together, we, will, we were able to stop that cruel practice. As kids remained locked up in Tornillo, knowing not when or even if they were going to see that mom and dad who risked everything, including their lives, for that little kid, so many of you kept vigil outside those gates to make sure that the rest of the country understood what was happening, you formed the pressure, 
that developed the political will to put an end to it. And as of tonight, Tornillo is closed and out of business. There's not a single child there anymore. And you made it happen. And when ICE Si se puede, si se puede, si se puede. On Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve when you learned that these asylum seekers held by CBP, turned over to Immigration and Customs Enforcement, had been dumped at the Greyhound bus station in downtown El Paso, without a single dime on them, with no food to eat, with little kids who were sick and needed help and medical attention. You all came downtown on Christmas Eve. You brought your families with you. You showed the kindness and the generosity which distinguishes El Paso and Will every single day going forward. So at this moment, if there's any doubt about whether together we can make a stand the generations that follow us will be grateful for. Have no doubt, we have done it before. We are made of great stuff. This community produces great people. We are the example that the United States of America needs right now. Desde aquí, yo veo el futuro de este país, la promesa de este país tan poderosa, tan positiva, y yo tengo tanto orgullo ser paseño fronterizo con ustedes. This is where we make our stand, and there's no other place I'd rather be, and no one else I'd rather do it with. I love you, El Paso. The country's counting on us. Let's do it.